Hello you buggers. It's the uh, time to talk about the, the kitchen strat. Um, the old friend is, uh, is about to be shipped out to the US. Any day now. I keep putting it off. <laughs> I, I don't want to see the, the, uh, the guy go, but um, he's going. Uh, so what is the kitchen strat and why is it so important? Tone wood. The kitchen strat started out as a piece of this. Uh, this is a piece of um, particle board kitchen counter worktop uh, that I had left over from um, our kitchen build. And uh, I wanted something to build a guitar body out of that was so unlike the material from the original guitar in the Tonewood test that would have uh, something to compare with. Now a lot of people complained that I didn't use um, high grade materials like mahogany or, or, or anything fancy. Um, but the point of the test was to see if um, we could hear any difference in the sound of the guitar uh, if we changed out the body material. Now yes we could have done it with some fancy materials but I thought I'll use this because this is pretty much far removed from wood. I mean it is wood, it's wood that's been crushed and re-glued together but it, you know it has no grain structure like wood, um, it's well it has none of the qualities of wood really that you'd expect um, to create any of the sort of like certain tones that um, other wood species would be giving you and uh, you know people talk about density, wood grain and pattern and all sorts of things like that um, that were affecting the tone. So this is where it started off and uh, the general result was that the guitar sounded the same. Now a lot of people found uh, that they could hear differences but uh, they were hearing differences mainly down to my uh, atrocious playing uh, rather than putting it down to the uh, well, they were—they were basically saying it was the wood material that was making the difference. When well, you could clearly see, it was just—it was just me. Um, so, and a lot of people said that um, the guitar sound is shit. Well, again, that was probably just me and uh, my recording capabilities at that time. It was one of the first videos I put out on YouTube. Uh, a lot of things have changed since then. Um, some would say the same. It's still got the same old bugger. Right, so that was then. Um, it was using the it was using the, uh, the tone experiment, and then uh, a gentleman in the US uh, wanted to buy it. He wanted to buy it because because of the way I did the test, um, uh, the methodology. He thought it was uh, he, he thought it was very good. And being an actual real scientist. Um, he uh, he wanted, you know, that particular guitar, and uh, so <laughs> I decided um, to spruce it up a bit. Uh, a year later, <laughs> it's spruced up. Um, so yeah, let's let's see what it looks like now. So yeah, we have the uh, specially built case for it and uh, I'll open it up. Right, so for the benefit of the people who haven't seen the, uh, the videos of the, the uh, I would call it a, a refit, a rebuild. Um, originally all the, uh, this resin binding, I suppose you might want to call it, on the outside was, was uh, pretty rough. It was just there to uh, protect the chipboard. Um, so that's all been uh, reapplied and smoothed off and given a lovely lovely polish um, we've uh, I've taken a veneer off the uh, another piece of this countertop and applied it to the headstock and the back has been smoothed and and uh, varnished to a lovely gloss with another veneer for the rear plate um, so it's it's looking pretty fabulous. It still has all the idiosyncrasies of the original build, 
um, like here where when I cut the uh, the armrest I just basically snapped the the material over um, and uh, you know it's it's you know it's kind of like rough and ready in certain areas but um, it still looks lovely so I took the guitar down to uh, a local depot of Howden's Joinery. Howden's is a very, very large company in the UK that produce um, kitchen and, well, kitchen, kitchens, kitchen doors, cupboards, you name it. Um, it's a huge company with a massive catalogue of, uh, of bits and bobs and equipment. But that's basically where this guitar came from. Um, from the leftover pieces from our kitchen fit. Uh, so I took it down there to show them. And uh, let's have a look. Well, one of the problems is uh, when you're going out filming stuff by yourself, there are technical difficulties. <laughs> the first part of it which was uh, my camera wasn't working when I showed it to the guys on the shop floor so uh, apologies for that but um, we did manage to get some material so I'll show you what I've got uh, edited around those who uh, didn't particularly want to be so shown on screen so uh, let's hear what they have to say <laughs> Yeah, so here we are in the uh, the Howden's warehouse. This is where the uh, the bad boy was born, and uh, we'll bump into the the uh, the guys who work here. I think they're going to throw me out. But uh, there's floorboards, doors, cupboard doors, and along here, this is where they store all the tone wood. How do? So here you are. Literally thousands and thousands of guitars waiting to be built here. So any material you want. They've got granite, they've got plain white, oak, uh, mahogany, maple, walnut, uh, stone, and uh, lots and lots of modern jazzy uh, materials too. You just choose the tone you want. Hello folks. Hello. Let's have a look. Oh wow. Oh my god, that's fantastic. It's the Howden special. Hello. Hang on. Oh my god. Lovely. Isn't it? Wow. And you play this? I don't play it. I just build it. Yeah. So how do you know how to build it if you don't know how to play it? Oh. <laughs> I bet he doesn't know how to cook. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you do. Do you do like monthly or a quarterly magazine, Howden's? Oh, they do put their name on it and prove that you made it out of their stuff and love it. That would probably go in the Grove. In the Grove. What's that? Is that our, it's like the Vatican. It's like our head office. Oh, yeah. But when we go on training courses, they take us round. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, they love it. They love the whole traditional thing. They yeah. love personalised stuff. You should do it. Well, definitely. Definitely do it. I know, oh, so it's fantastic, isn't it? You could make us a nice 20 go. That's. Mm. Not, no, that's. 
That one would be that's, really fun. That's very, very guitar-y, that is. That's very guitar-y. Um, we've got a grey version of that coming out soon. Yeah. Which would look really nice. Oh, you've got that. Nice. Look at that. Pretty Hollywood. Yeah, and just... Do, and just Pure white. Pure right. white. Stone. Stone. Guitar. Absolutely. Do it. Let's go to America, girls. Take a good look. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going very soon. <laughs> do, you, do you fit kitchens here? Yeah. So I can get you to build some of these for me. Huh? I can get you to build some of these for me. Oh, yeah. Lacking it nicely. It must have taken a bit of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Several layers. Is it water? Is it water? Is this water? You might have Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And now I'll hand you over to the, uh, the improvised stylings of Ben Wakeman guitar virtuoso.
So I think you'd have to agree, that guitar does not sound shit. This guitar does not sound shit. It sounds great. So where does that leave us? Where does it leave me? It kind of leaves us in the, uh, the territories of could you, would you, should you. Could you build a guitar out of kitchen worktop? Yes, you could. Uh, should you build a guitar out of kitchen worktop? Well, probably not. I mean, it's not, 
it's not going to be a collectible. It's, it will have zero second-hand value, probably, um, because everyone will... Because it's just not what anybody expects a guitar to be made from. Would you build a guitar out of kitchen worktop? Well, I'll tell you what, I bloody well am. I'm going to make some more. Um, I, I've really come to like this. Uh, it's not because I like working in the material. Um, but I do like its quirkiness. And I have to say, even though that's not like a, a natural wood grain or anything, that has its own kind of beauty there. Um, lessons learned. Let's first talk about wood. I mean, just for instance, here is a, a fretboard, fingerboard, whatever you want to call it, um, taken off another guitar neck. And this has been sitting in my house you know, for a week or so, a couple of weeks. Um, admittedly, I've still got the frets on it, so it's kind of walked in that direction, uh, just by drying out. I mean, surely this was already dry on the guitar. I mean, it's been sitting in my house. Um, well, all the time, and uh, so it's bowed in that direction. Okay, admittedly, the, the frets are going to be pushing that out, but it's also curled in that direction. So this wood was not holding its natural shape uh, before it was applied to the neck. Um, oh, I haven't actually looked at the neck to see what that's doing. But in natural wood, these are the forces that are constantly fighting each other. This is why you end up with warped necks. Um, because just, I mean, wood is a heterogeneous material, which means it's, it's just not consistent all the way through. Um, pretty, yes, but not particularly stable. Um, on the other hand, let's just take a glance at this. Now, this is not from my kitchen. This, this is from my what I would lovingly call my uh, lumber yard, which is a big pile of shit out the back of my house. And it's been covered over, but this has been exposed the spiders and the elements for almost two years. Yeah, it should have been in a skip. Um, now what's happened in those two years? Well, yeah, water has got in. Water has got in and, and it's blown this piece here um, all along the bottom there, but it's all exposed. I mean, this has literally been exposed to water, rain, weather. Um, it's still straight as a die. Um, yeah, apart from apart from the exposed edges, um, it's fine. And you know what? I'm going to make a guitar out of this. There's still plenty of meat left in the middle of that. I'm going to make a guitar out of that. I mean. Just think about it for a moment there. If that piece of board was a guitar and it was finished with the same kind of gloss varnish that that one's got on the back of it and you've left it outside next to another guitar, any guitar, I mean I've, I've seen guitars that have been in people's sheds uh, that have, are knackered just, just through that kind of storage. Um, you could probably put a guitar that's made out of that and gloss varnish outside and leave it for two years and pick it up and play it the next day. Um, it'd be worth finding out. Uh, again, it's down to could you, would you, should you. Now, I'm not saying you should build guitars out of this material. Um, and I'm hoping you won't because I'm going to. I've had a few people ask me to um, to build them guitars, and uh, and I've had to say, you know, there's a bit of a waiting list because, quite frankly, there is. Um, 
I'm not exactly the fastest person because I'm trying to do so many new things all at the same time. Um, and I haven't gone into just pure wood carvery luthery guitar making. This is really getting my juices flowing. Um, now, the worktop material is, I've got loads of bits and pieces of it lying around in my workshop. Um, I use it for all kinds of things. Uh, clamping and, oh, I've, I've used it for drilling into and this one's just got a bit of sandpaper on the edge of it so I can use it as a sanding block. I mean, this stuff is square, it's stable, it don't go anywhere. It's just fabulous. I'm using a bit. Here is a, uh, a fretboard in the making um, that has been sculpted up. I mean, I mean, it has been sculpted rather than machined. Uh, with a 12 inch radius on it and uh, I'm preparing this so I can make a mold and then I'll be able to cast finger fingerboards out of all kinds of materials um, that could be really interesting um, casting them as opposed to cutting them out of you know wood materials ebony or whatever I'm going to cast them um, yeah, so I'm going to be able to get this to a like a glass finish, and when I cast them out, they'll come out as a glass finish. It's on one of these pieces of offcuts because it's keeping it flat, perfectly flat, and I can. And when I when I mould this, I'll have a steel bar running across it, so it will keep it flat, constantly flat, forever flat. Um, So that's interesting. Uh, so yeah, a man-made materials. We're talking about man-made materials now. This is a length of carbon fiber. I mean, there's, there is some flex in it. There is some flex in it. But this is like a 10 millimeter thick rod. You could put you could put a headstock on the end of that and glue that onto a guitar body and, and that, would work, that would work as a neck. But what I'm going to do is I am going to build these guitars. And I'm going to build these guitars out of this crap. The only thing is I want an extra bit of strength at the neck joint. So I'm going to drill a hole, a 10 mil hole, and insert this in epoxy, you know, about that much into the neck pocket area that will strengthen, strengthen that. Um, that's what I got this for. Um, so yes, necks. Necks. The carbon fibre gives it structure. The particle board, could you make a neck out of it? No, not really, because it doesn't have the strength, the uh, longitudinal strength, to, uh, to cope with being a guitar neck. However, if you put a carbon fiber veneer spine down the back of it, it will be strong enough. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'm going to be building a guitar pretty much entirely from particle board with some resin, a bit of, bit of fiberglass, and uh, a little bit of carbon fiber just here and there, just poking around little bits and pieces and we'll do a test on that and I bet you it will sound fantastic and like I say this is the sort of thing that's really getting my juices flowing at the moment how how low can you go how crap can you get now sorry Howdens I'm not saying your your countertop is crap it uh, but in the uh, world of um, guitars um, it's way down on the uh, on the tone woods um, as far as most people are concerned, not me. Uh, so yeah, the the particle board. I mean, this stuff. <coughs> it is, it is heavy, but there's you know 
<laughs> this is a bit of floorboard made from particle board. It's everywhere. Um, shelving. Um, uh, shelving. There's, I've, even, I've even got some uh, lying around in my workshop that was uh, picked up from a, uh, um, a car part company. Big sheets of the stuff, you know, four foot by four foot sheets that they were throwing out because uh, that's just using packing. Uh, with a bit of judicious use, with a bit of um, judicious, with a bit of thoughtful use, I'll be able to make guitars out of it, and I'm going to make guitars out of it. I'm going to make necks out of it. Yeah. So uh, watch this space. There's going to be some interesting stuff coming up, uh, including the uh, the DMF guitar and including another guitar I'm building for Mike G, the, uh, the Little Black Dog. So I'm going to build them out of these materials. Um, they could be considered, they could, could be considered prototypes, um, but we'll see. I think they're going to be great. Now, as for the kitchen strap and the, uh, the materials of that, I'm going to build some more of these. I'm going to build some absolutely beautiful versions of this. Um, with with binding around the edges, you know, none of this horrible crap. It's going to be beautiful, and uh, I might even build some with the uh, the Howden's logo. Uh, I'll do a one without a pit guard with just pickup mounts, and Howden's logo, their name embellished into it. Um, and as you've seen from the video, there's lots of materials to choose from, so. Uh, Come on, Howden. Give me some of your, uh, give me some of your materials. Give me a call, and uh, let's make some, let's make some uh, particle board guitars. Till next time.